gets bigger the more you take away from it? The answer is a hole. However, not all holes are created equal because some are deeper, darker, and scarier than the others. Like the stupefying hole in the universe that contains nothing, known as the Boötes Void. What is this hole about? Where is the Boötes Void located? And should you fear it? Keep watching as we bring you the terrifying hole in the universe where nothing exists discovered by scientists. If you want to see spooky things, try heading to deep space. From harsh planets where you won't last a second to black holes that swallow everything, you are guaranteed to jump out of your skin. However, imagine being thrown inside a massive hole where absolutely nothing exists. Scary, right? This is the story of the Boötes Void, one of the spookiest places in the universe. What do you find where there is nothing? While that question may perplex you, brace up, because we might find out in this video. The Boötes Void, also known as the Great Void, is a spherical region of space where you will find very few galaxies. It's approximately 700 million light-years from Earth and is located near the constellation Boötes, which is how it got its name. The Boötes Void is often associated with images of Barnard 68, a dark nebula that does not allow light to pass through. However, there are differences. The images of Barnard 68 are much darker than those of the Boötes Void, as the nebula is much closer and there are fewer stars in front of it, as well as being a physical mass that blocks light passing through. Just how large is the Boötes Void? Light can travel for 330 million years from one side of the void to another. In comparison, light takes about 8 minutes to get to us from the Sun. In fact, this is about 0.27% of the observable universe, which is a massive 93 billion light years across. The Boötes Void has an estimated volume of 236,000 MCP cubed, making it the largest void ever discovered in the universe. The Boötes Void was discovered by astronomer Robert Kirshner and his research team. Soon after this discovery, astronomers began to notice just how incredibly sparse the area really was. At first, they only found eight galaxies across the hole, but they later discovered a total of just 60 galaxies. Now, while the space occupied by 60 galaxies is massive, that is practically nothing on the scale of the Boötes Void. It's like stumbling upon 60-mile-long objects across an area the size of the continental United States. In fact, as astronomer Greg Aldering explains, the scale of the void is such that if we placed the Milky Way in the center of the Boötes Void, we wouldn't have known there were other galaxies until the 1960s when sophisticated instruments became available for studying deep space. Here again is for context, the Milky Way has approximately two dozen neighbors in a region of space just three million light years across. Looking at the volume of the Boötes Void, it should contain about 10,000 galaxies when considering that the average distance between galaxies elsewhere in the universe is a few million light years. The thing about this supervoid is that it's yet another reminder of the vastness and sparseness of the cosmos. The universe that we see is too impossibly large for us to comprehend. Our place within it is a tiny, insignificant microscopic speck. But how did Kirshner and his colleagues discover the Boötes Void, since it's not every day that you stumble upon such a supervoid? The team was actually calculating the redshifts of galaxies. Redshifts measure the speed with which an object is moving away from the Earth. Since the universe is expanding, the farther away a galaxy is, the faster it moves, meaning redshift can be used to measure distance. Kirshner and his team were taking advantage of this to create a 3D map of the universe. As the map took shape, the scientists began to notice something strange. At 700 million light-years from Earth was a blank void. In a roughly spherical region around 330 million light-years wide, a region the Milky Way could fit into billions of times over, they found barely any galaxies. Initially, they called the region the Great Nothing, but later came to be known as the Boötes Void, as it appears to lie in the constellation of Boötes, the herdsman who drives the plow around the North Pole. Since then, scientists have conducted surveys that have managed to produce more detailed maps of our universe and show how the galaxies are arranged like a giant web. The majority of galaxies in our universe are found in long structures known as filaments that wind through the cosmos. When these meet, they create regions with a high concentration of galaxies known as clusters. Between these threads, however, 
a huge empty void with hardly any galaxies at all. The voids make up 80% of the observable universe, and most around 30 to 300 million light years across. Boötes is one of the largest, earning the title of supervoid. Some areas were slightly more dense, which caused their gravitational pull to be greater and pull matter away from the less dense areas. As a result, they become even more dense and in turn, their gravitational pull increases again, so they attracted more matter and so on. At the same time, the universe was expanding greatly, and so these fluctuations that started on a quantum level eventually spanned hundreds of millions of light years. Meanwhile, smaller clumps of matter began to organize themselves into galaxies. Of course, the discovery of the Boötes void has forced scientists to re-examine their theories about the universe. For example, they now have to account for the extreme non-uniform distribution of matter throughout the universe when talking about the formation of the galaxies. At this point, you're probably wondering how a monstrous hole like Boötes void came to be. Scientists have been trying hard to explain the origin of this anomalous region of space. Their computer models suggested that smaller voids, which are much more common, are caused by galaxies drawing closer to one another on account of gravitational attraction. This causes neighboring regions to empty out, and because the process is self-reinforcing, it tends to snowball. However, on critical examination, this doesn't explain why the Boötes void exists. The major reason is that there hasn't been enough time since the universe began for mere gravitational forces to clear out a space of that insane size. However, there are two other possibilities for how the huge Boötes void was formed. One theory is that supervoids are caused by the intermingling of smaller ones. Aldering mentioned earlier, notice that galaxies inside of voids take the curious shape of a tubular structure, likely an important clue. In turn, he suspects that the Boötes void is the result of smaller voids coming together, similar to how soap bubbles combine to form a single large one. As for the tube of galaxies, that's likely the remnant of the boundary between the smaller voids. Those galaxies, speculates Aldering, are now stranded inside the supervoid. But what about the other possibility of the origin of the Boötes void? This one likely has never appeared in the scientific literature. It says the Boötes void could be the result of an expanding Kardashev three-scale civilization. As the colonization bubble expands outward from its home system, the civilization dims each star and eventually each galaxy it encounters by blanking it in a Dyson shell. This might also explain why the void has such a nice spherical shape. Given that the void is about 700 million light years from Earth and that intelligent life could have emerged in the universe about 4 billion years ago, this ancient civilization may have had enough time to perform this astonishing feat of cosmological engineering. Now, between you, we, and the gatepost, this is pure speculation, but it's worth throwing it out there as a possibility given the strangeness of the phenomenon. So, if you were to drop into the Boötes void, what would it feel like? Visitors to the area would surely feel overwhelmed by the isolation, with its extreme distance between galaxies and blacker-than-black view of distant space. And Boötes' void is probably the most perfect vacuum in space. Not only would objects like rocks and dust be exceptionally rare, but so too would particles. It might take eons, or possibly never, for particles to interact, so you must be capable of entertaining yourself inside this void. What else is the implication of this vast hole in deep space? Well, the extremely low density of the Boötes void means that when a pattern of neutrinos enters on one side of the void, it looks exactly the same upon exit. The same is true for photons. Of course, because they have much more mass than both photons and neutrinos, particles of matter would get pulled towards the walls of the void. As a result of this state-preserving property, the Boötes void may one day be recognized as the ultimate time capsule. Imagine firing off a pattern of photons and the pattern to be rediscovered hundreds of millions of years later when it reaches the other side. And since it has very low density, this is an ideal place for testing high speeds. In fact, speeds of up to 99.99999% the speed of light. The void, devoid of the annoying intergalactic dust, will allow anybody to set insane speed records. By studying large structures like the Boötes void, astronomers can gain knowledge about what the universe looked like in its earliest moments. 
Scientists these days have access to advanced telescope and imaging technology, helping them to create more detailed versions of Kirshner's maps. An example is the Dark Energy Survey, which has managed to map out a quarter of the southern sky. In the process, it's examined around 300 million galaxies. Let's hear what you think of the largest empty hole in the universe in the comments section below.